Zimenga. And I'm your host, Evans Zeminga. Today we're going to talk about sexual violence against children. More than 370 million girls and women alive today, or one in eight, experienced rape or sexual assault before the age of 18. And this is according to new UNICEF estimates released last week. The first ever global and regional estimates on sexual violence against children published ahead of the International Day of the Girl last week reveal the scale of the violation worldwide, especially for adolescent girls, often with lifelong implications. An earlier UNICEF report in Zimbabwe stated that over a third of girls experience sexual violence before the age of 18. For most of these girls, the perpetrators are intimate partners. Sexual violence on children has a significant impact on girls and boys who experience it. The effect is both physical as well as very psychological. And now to discuss this, we are joined by award-winning gender justice advocate and founder of Fathers Against Abuse Trust, Mr. Alois Nyamazana, and we also have human rights defender and executive director of Pumulani, Minnesota, African Women Against Violence, Ms. Comfort Dondo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Live Talk. Thank you for having us. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Good evening. You are welcome. Ladies first, let's start with you, Ms. Dondo. This is a very topical issue we are discussing here today. What social and cultural norms you can think of allow sexual violence to occur in our communities, particularly looking at Zimbabwe? Um, thank you again for having me. Um, I guess uh, cultural norms and practices that continue to perpetuate uh, the sexual violence against, sexual against children is, uh, the first one is the view and the devaluing of uh, children in general. Children being um, viewed as inferior, as uh, people who need to only be seen, not heard. Um, and then when you add the layer of the girl child, um, some of those uh, patriarchal norms, which are really not culture, they're not really part of our culture, but they were brought by, by colonial masters. Um, because before the colonialists came to our continent, there was really a matriarchal structure um, in our families, but I won't go into that history lesson. I just want to make sure we don't own that culture, that uh, patriarchy is not part of our culture as African people. Um, so what the patriarchy does, it devalues the girl child. Um, things like marriage, um, marriage, dowry, rora, as we call it in Shona, it's supposed to be a celebration of a rite of passage, but a lot of misunderstanding around the ownership of um, the, the woman from the men. I think it's a lot of um, those kind of traditions. And then as far as practices, um, you see, we have things like the practices in child marriage, um, traditional practices that escalate the risk of violence, um, like um, practices around kuripangozi, you know, where a, a young girl will be made into a family because there's been, um, uh, there's been a dispute or there's been a death that is caused by the other family. Um, and especially I'll speak in ending, uh, practices like child marriage within some religious sectors or cults, mm -hmm. as I would call them, um, those kind of practices um, are in re in, indeed um, some of those that are causing a lot of the harm um, and um, normalizing the violence against women and children. Mm -hmm. that, that was a very, a very clear narrative you're painting there. Now, coming to you, Mr. Nyamazana, it's very interesting to see men standing up where women will be pointing fingers and say, you are the perpetrators, but it's good to see men standing up and saying we are here to defend, to protect. What's your take? Do young people have enough equipment, enough uh, accessibility to accurate information, age appropriate, that empowers them to recognize abuse when it happens? Uh, thank you so much for, for that question. Um, you know, when it comes to access to information, I think for me that is one of the greatest challenges that we face, uh, maybe in the continent of Africa as a whole, mm -hmm. because you will notice that the um, you know, people still have that perception of uh, you know, tra traditional norms and, and, and practices around uh, child marriage, child sexual abuse is normal. So we still normalize those things because people don't have access to information. I'll just give an example. 
to say recently the government of Zimbabwe passed a law that says that our children who are under the age of 18 should not consent to sex. But the reality is you have to do a poll right now to check how many people are away or what percentage of the population is away that we have a new law that sticks to that. You decide, you'll find that they also only have less than 10% of people who are away that a child who is under the age of 18 years. Uh, you know, not allowed to, to, to convert to sex, okay, not convert to sex. So issues of access to information is a very big challenge. So you notice that uh, information usually is accessed mostly through, um, you know, the radio, through, uh, through newspapers and sometimes online platforms. Mm -hmm. So these platforms play a fundamental role in terms of disseminating information. I know, for example, Studio 7 is accessible even in the raw areas. But there are also some people who cannot even access those uh, communication channels. So it then becomes a challenge. Because one of the things that also perpetuates this sexual violence is poverty. And those, the most vulnerable people cannot access things like radio, cannot access things like data to go online, they cannot access to appear television and use data and all those things. So they remain in darkness. They don't have access to information. So as a result, even if a person gets married as a citizen of the social abuse, in some communities it's actually viewed as normal. So access to information is a very, very big challenge. And that means even shifting norms will remain a challenge. Because people can only, you know, like I always tell people that um, right now we have a new law that says a child cannot consent to sex before six, uh, before 18, they cannot get married before 18. But if people are not aware of that information, do you know that we will continue to have silly prison with criminals who are not even aware of the law? And that does not change much in terms of, you know, um, changing, um, addressing the problem in general of, of children sexual abuse. So, yeah, access to information is a big challenge. There's also the urban rural divide. Most people in the rural areas, they are the more disadvantaged, yet they are the most affected. People in the rural areas don't have internet, they don't have radio, television, and all those things. So that's, there's also the issue of um, urban rural divide. And also the cost of data in Zimbabwe is very high. And so for people to be able to go through the internet and all those things is a challenge. So in short, I would say access to information on these issues is a big deal. And sometimes, maybe just uh, lastly, sometimes the information is also disseminated using, you know, um, even English, and they don't, we don't have mostly the local languages, the local languages. So in the end, they may not even understand. I think sometimes the way even disseminate the information, maybe it's uh, development partners or even other stakeholders, mm -hmm. is friendly to the needs of the communities. Aha. Uh -huh. Whew, that's a, that, that was quite a, a, a mouthful. A, a lot of information there uh, from Mr. Nyamazana. Let me come back to you, Ms. Dondo. Vanala Iki Vaskanala. Varukusangana ni mata ambu zikwesa, varukusangana na waya. Ambu nyiki zwa, batu kwa chibaro, ama nyiki zwa kurorwa. A lot of what's happening to them. What needs to be done so that these victims and survivors have access to services? that support justice and healing after everything that's happening to them. Ah, uh, ini ndo ndo na chini chuku tanga chuku tewe urumende yedu urumende yedu ndio na fanra ku tora dano raka 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 kurisa reku tiri support ya ma organizations ah uh, nengi ma organizations ya zazi angu varipa varipa nari neni ah uh, ma organizations um aruku aruku vira kuzira um kuzini ro kwe wanaskani madzimai um pabonde. Um, panofana kuita ipo zizo ya kuwe dira kuziva Anoshi ma prevention um, awareness project Kuita jirongo shi kuzizawa na mumuri Uye na raunda neshe kwa zero mvumo Uye kukosha kukuga mchira mosha kana muna abatwa uh, Ashita chinchakadai uh, Kunofana ungu kuchitimbi kwa mitemo Tofana ukuru dira mitemo ine simba Uye nzira ya kuzivira vana kuba mkuza nyirua Uye kuona kutimitemo ino tewe zero Nonesa, <laughs> 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 <laughs
anu 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 body autonomy mabuku ana mabatsira kuti vazi vazive kuti chakanaka ndi chipi chisiri normal ndi chipi nekuti mukupedzisira ndinoti kubatwa chibaro kwemwana skana achigere kuva munhu munukadzi mudzimai the child the, the sexual child abuse of a girl child of a young child it destroys her life from that very onset no kanganisa opinion wake anozosara okura ave mudzimai anozororeka asi mberi kwazvo kune nkine zvinhu zvakawanda zvekuti anogona kutsadza kuti mai vakana vachaya kuvana vake yet not post traumatic stress disorder kana ndino kuti kune hurumende iri kana vakaterera dai yaenda ka priority yavo yekudzivirira kubatwa kumbonyekedzwa kwemadzimai nevana sikana pabonde mhm before i move back to you mr nyamazana i understand we've got a caller tine msikana wechidiki a youth activist from harare uh Tashel Sagia Tashel can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you for joining on the show. Same scanner chidiki. What's happening around you? Tell us, paint a picture for us. Nyaya ye sexual violence, sexual harassment yeva na vaskana i. Uri muskana kai. Zvakamira same munharaunda mamgero. Uh actually the situation is so bad because she was really complaining about the same thing especially uh dead ground new religion mm-hmm. i still remember when i was growing up panic to do as a friend right this friend of mine was an orphan she was like three years older than me so i still remember when we do the form three i can remember when we come back to the church we come back to the church because the mother of panic to do as a friend so and end up holiday uh, and i think Another book, uh, I mentioned it on the short end of follow up for the people of Angai. And she can be when you come on our cookies and the manager road. And I mentioned it, we saw her talking. She can say, How can you say that my road and my name is getting on our school? She can tell me it's good, 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 it's kutini kazi ya spiritu so because of mm. uh, shaky mm. like struggling background wana sana warkuru za and working with kaklarini plus ngadi that one thing then another thing number two i think uh religion church especially church zana marangi is i still remember i was a tenant uh i was 15 when i was 18 and anga to be married and according to her i thought he was not a teacher and it's normal and she was expecting someone two years younger to come join us in plan our language is language in korora and our eat um so he was teaching that i was little proud in mirimi wangu acharoronga mu are two years younger than me which is 18 then i am 18 year old wow I expect to someone as two years younger, as single daro, single daro. So at the end of the day, la nara ti sweti ska na varungo te kira la chungo asa uchwa nyeti daro nyeti daro nyeti daro nyeti daro nyeti kumba nyeti kumba people are struggling or religion but religion is the worst cause they have to contribute to these things. Okay. Trukuzvinzwa zvamataura izvo e vanzadzi I hope vadare vedu vakateerera vanzwa mwana achitsana ngura uyo. Mr. Nyamazana mamunzwa here msikana uyu zvaari kutaura. Eh ndakatsinga zvino zvacho but zvino zvachanda vacha kuzvino papa zvino vacho vacho vachinzo vacho vacho vachinzo vacho 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 abata nyaya ye makereke the religion cults and 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 churches doctrine doctrines do not vana varorwe vachingo rorwa rorwa vari vadiki pamwe pacho pamabarika ari kutsana ngurwa iwaya that brings me to where i was coming at uh, kwa muri kuti iyo mitemo the laws and regulations in the country do you feel the laws and regulations are are, are, are there to protect children from all forms of sexual violence i'll say zimbabwe is one of the best uh, um, legal framework in terms of uh, protecting children i think we've done well uh, as a country in terms of enacting laws 
that are meant to protect the uh, children. I think I was actually highlighting one piece of legislation that the government recently passed that uh, prohibits sex to children who are below the age of 18. Our constitution is very clear to say children below the age of 18 uh, should not get married. So I think we have very best bad. Having a piece of legislation and implementing it are two different things. So what we have uh, as, as a country, we, um, we have good pieces of paper in terms of legislation, but implementation is, is, is what makes it. So um, we continue having cases like what uh, our sister was raising, cases of children, especially within the apostolic sector and even other sectors, children who are getting married at a very young age, mm-hmm. but we haven't really seen people being convicted and sentenced to for those cases. So that is the challenge that's there. So, you know, people continue and, uh, you know, committing these uh, crimes, but some of them, they even want to free, because it's also about corruption within the justice system, which is also a challenge. So, yeah, I would say we have very, a very good legal framework, but it's not being implemented, and also even the fact that people are not even aware of the law itself. Okay. So we need to, uh, to educate people about the law, and that can then help to shift norm and also make sure that we implement uh, the system. And I also believe that uh, perfection is very important, my brother. Even some people actually don't even report because they feel that the justice system somehow is also cumbersome in terms of accessing the justice itself. So we have a piece of legislation, but is it accessible? That is another question that we have to ask ourselves. How efficient is it? The person is in a proper case, you turn around for the conclusion and for the closing of this case. It may also take long. So people end up you know, getting tired and they give up on their cases. So I think that those are some of these that we need to address, especially in the government. Government should make sure that the justice delivery system uh, if you say so, that the piece of legislation that we have works for children. Uh-huh. That's very loud and clear there. Moving back to Miss Dondo, Wanyamazana uh, here raises the point here, here government and. Uh, and Kutivano Dakunzwa, but I need to ask you this one. Who holds government and communities accountable to implement these international standards like, you know, uh, 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 laws and regulations and behavior amongst the people? Kutivano Kutivano Dakunzwa, what do um, um, so, organization, you know, the organization, you know, the Global Treaty on End of Violence mm-hmm. Against Women and Girls. Global Treaty, I can't go find another name of the name where we have been talking about the Mafogga, Kanoj Pinda Mundege. It's a universal law. Whether you're flying to Siberia or you're flying to Namibia from Zimbabwe, I will pretend that we could put a Mafogga. We can put a Mafogga in Mushimbozi. We can charge the same amount of money. Because it's, a every, it's a universal law. So to, right now, to who Truku Ravara with the United Nations, Wari Semu, with the Mumbiro Rem Temo, Kuduka Batamana Shibaro, Uri Ku Malaysia, or Batamana Shibaro, Uri Kumashin, or Ku Bohera, or Batamana Shibaro from New York City. The consequences are the same universally. In those Ngoti, is in those Shabatra, or Kutu Mendeedu, in cases of issues around by cheat out my laws, why you are by Swari in force. Now, there has to be. There has to be consequences for each nation, for each government, to uphold its citizens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now we are not going to tell you what is going on. TB Joshua, sorry, in chapter one, we are not TB Joshua. We are going to move to Azad. No, TB Joshua, we are going to move to the day of the song. Pani evanu, we are going to perpetrate the violence from a quarry, from a quarry, from a decades, from a decades. We are going to tease, we are going to move up on my platform. We are going to move up on my celebrity. We are going to move up on my daddy. We are going to move up on my daddy. We are going to move up on my daddy. We are going to move up on my daddy. No one of us are going to use a humble mirror say, Van, one of my daddy characters, Vano Petra, Baba Vaja, and Yerama's my account, and the my platforms are right now. Vanu Vanu was saying, Vash no, Vash no, Vash no, Luama's my. Can I know Tower of Mordhai is sexual abuse, but is sexual abuse 
na ukuthi muni yanga kanye ushanisa platform yakhe sanyi ramadzi mahine ndira itoto aiwa yaka jeka iyo tinotenda la darevedu watanga tinavo nasi e mukuru we we sangano re fathers against abuse trust wa Alois Nyamazana as well as human rights defender and executive director of Pumulani Minnesota African Women Against Violence Miss Dondo we also thank you our listeners and our viewers from wherever you've been watching and listening from let's take a quick look at what's happening here in the US with just 3 weeks to go to the election day in this last month of uh, US presidential campaigning Donald Trump and Kamala Harris are both trying to reach the relatively small number of voters who say they have still not decided on who to support. VOA correspondent Scott Stans looks at the undecideds in this election. Some Americans are already making their choice for president with early voting underway in many states. But there remain voters who say they are undecided between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. You know, I, I just want to see, like, I want to understand who they are. They haven't really been involved much, and they're new to the entire political climate on both sides. They come from both interesting different backgrounds, but I want to see who they are and how they represent their candidates. Undecided voters are about 3% of the electorate, according to public opinion polls. John Johnson is a research fellow at Marquette University's law school. For a lot of voters, they haven't started paying that much attention yet. And so I think when you come up and ask them, that's the answer they might give. Some people also in the Midwest might be reticent to tell you who they'll vote for. Um, so they could be some of that as well. Targeted campaigning by Harris and Trump is moving some undecided voters, says University of Massachusetts political scientist Tatiche Teta. The population of the undecided voter is shrinking. Um, and it shrinks with each day. Most people are going to make up their minds before Election Day, and what's really going to matter is going to be the on-the-ground mobilization of the Democratic Party and the Republican Party and in what is likely going to be an extremely close election. Trump and Harris have different challenges in convincing undecided voters, says Brookings Institution senior fellow Darrell West. He needs to reassure Americans that, one, he respects the rule of law, uh, that he's not going to be crazy and chaotic if he becomes a president. She, on the other hand, is less experienced. Uh, she took positions a few years ago that were much more liberal than the policies that she's espousing now. So she has to sh reassure voters that it's the Kamala Harris of today that they're going to get as president. Trump, as the better known of the candidates, has both advantages and disadvantages when it comes to undecided voters, says Johnson. Donald Trump is a candidate running for the third time for president, so most people have strong opinions about him already. Um, and so of that sliver of people who remain undecided, just a single-digit percentage number of people, both parties are working hard to convince them to vote. That's because those undecided voters could make the difference in close swing state races that will likely decide who wins. Scott Stearns, VOA News. And moving to Namibia, descendants of people who fled German persecution in the early 1900s are returning to their ancestral homeland. The government of Namibia has set aside five commercial farms for the relocation of almost 100 ethnic Abaherero people. Vitalio Angula reports from Vinduk in Namibia. <laughs> As the sun rises on a windy September day, Veron Kapitako is getting the final stamps on her immigration documents. She is among about 100 over Herero people of Namibian descent relocating to their ancestral homeland. This journey began in 2015, so it's been eight years waiting for us to be repatriated to our motherland. And we waited a long time, and we were beginning to have doubts. We were not sure if one day we will come or not, but finally we managed. We arrived. We are welcome. Happy faces. Everyone is happy. We are, we are to, uh... Thousands of ethnic Obaherero fled Namibia in the early 1900s to escape a war between German colonizers and local resistance fighters. Nearly three-fourths of the Obaherero population, about 60,000 people, were wiped out in a genocidal campaign. Many of the 20,000 who remained found refuge in what is now Botswana, but they regarded Namibia as home. Today is indeed a historic day. 
a day on which the people who are Batswana of Namibian descent are coming back and tracing their steps back to Namibia. Namibia, the country of their motherland. So it is indeed a historic day. Carrying the luggage with toddlers in tow, about 50 of our Herero men and women cross the Gobe border post. They are escorted by government leaders and traditional chiefs to begin their new lives. More of our Herero will come when their ghetto get the necessary clearance from authorities. The Namibian government has set aside five commercial farms for the returnees. The new arrivals are hopeful the transition will be a smooth one. If you give me a farm and all the implements on the farm, I'll be able to farm successfully. This is just the beginning of a resettlement process that will take months. Namibian officials say it is a form of restorative justice for people whose ancestors lost their land so many decades ago. Vitalio Angula, VOA News, Wintook, Namibia. This brings us to the end of the show, and I'm signing off in Washington. I'm Evans Zeninga.